Um, hi there. Uh, and so in the previous parts of the videos, uh, we've been talking about the duffing uh, equation um, uh, with an eye towards uh, introducing the method of multi-scale expansions. Um, now, just as a reminder, uh, the duffing equation is a second order non-linear differential equation of the form uh, d2y dd2 plus y plus epsilon y cube is zero. Uh, which we'll solve subject to the initial conditions that y at time t equals 0 is 1 and the first derivative of y we'll use the dot notation for the derivative uh, so the first derivative of y at t equals 0 is 0 and epsilon here is some small positive parameter uh, much less than 1 and greater than 0 and again this equation is suitably non dimensionalized where y is the independent variable uh, the dependent variable and t is t which is which we take to be as time is the independent variable um, and this is a nonlinear differential equation because of the presence of the term epsilon y cube. Uh, so there's a y cube involved, which uh, makes it nonlinear. Um, so, uh, so just as a reminder of what we have done uh, in the previous uh, couple of videos when we have talked about the duffing equation. Uh, so one of the things we saw is that uh, a regular uh, perturbation expansion, a regular expansion, uh, gives rise to a secular term. So this gives rise to a secular term, uh, secular term, which is of the form or proportional to t times sine of t. So, so the expansion for y, y would scale as t sine t for large times t, uh, in particular of the order of 1 over epsilon. And this is the secular term. And what this tells us is that as time becomes larger and larger, or as time approaches infinity, the solution of this equation y will also become unbounded with time. Um, and then uh, in another video, we saw that in fact the solution y of t, y t uh, of the duffing equation, is always bounded for all times t. Okay. Um, so, so there is the, so 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 the regular perturbation expansion, at least uh, to let's say order epsilon square, which we did, uh, is in fact not consistent with the observation with with with, with the fact that y uh, uh, as a function of t should always remain bounded. Um, and so, so the multi-scale method expansion method is actually uh, one trick um, to get rid of this uh, secular term, even to finite order perturbation expansion uh, of the solution. And in fact. Uh, it turns out that uh, it's, it's very hard to go to higher order terms when we're doing the multi-scale expansion methods and we'll have to restrict ourselves to only the leading order solution uh, for, for the purpose of this, this video. But even that will tell us how, uh, how, how uh, even, even if we restrict ourselves to the lowest order, we'll see that uh, the multi-scale expansion method actually helps us get rid of this artifice, which is a secular term that comes about uh, in the solution to this equation when we use simple regular perturbation expansion method. Um, so let's just uh, discuss what is the basic idea of why is it called a multi-scale expansion method, um, keeping these two uh, observations uh, or these two uh, observations in mind. So, so we'll be talking about the multi-scale expansion method, multi-scale expansion, and uh, the idea is to introduce um, new uh, new time scales into the problem into the problem into the perturbation expansion problem uh, as an example to lowest order uh, what we'll do is we'll introduce we'll work with two time scales so we already have a physical time scale t uh, we'll introduce a new time scale tau which is actually epsilon times t um, and, and we'll think of uh, expanding or looking for a perturbation expansion to this to, to the duffing equation as a uh, 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 in, in the form which looks like this. So we'll think of y as a function of these two time scales t and tau and, and just think of them as two independent variables. They're, they're not strictly independent because of this dependency. Tau is in fact epsilon times t. But for the purpose of writing down formally the perturbation expansion, uh, we'll write y as a function of two variables t and tau. Uh, and do an expansion in the form y0, which is a function of t and tau, plus x0, y1, which is a function of t and tau, plus higher order terms in the same way. Um, 
and, 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 and now what we do is, uh, we'll calculate the derivatives of y with respect to t, which is, now, now notice that in this differential equation, uh, y is just a function of one variable, and in fact y is a function of only one variable time t. This time tau is an artifice or uh, is, is a variable that we have sort of introduced into the problem. Uh, but, but in order to write uh, the terms of this expansion into this differential equation, we need to calculate derivatives of y with respect to time t. Um, and, and the way we'll do that is to use the chain rule uh, because we know the dependency uh, of tau on the time t. Uh, so, so as an example, uh, if you have to calculate the first derivative of y with respect to time t, we write it in the form that y is a partial derivative with respect to time t plus partial derivative with respect to time tau times d tau dt. Now because tau is epsilon times t, uh, we know d tau dt is epsilon and so this will be the partial derivative of y with respect to time t plus epsilon times the partial derivative of y with respect to time t. Uh, and in this way we'll also calculate uh, the higher order derivative term d2 y dt2 that we need to figure out. Uh, now we know that y is a function of y0 and y1, so y0 and y1 would also uh, look like, it will also involve these partial derivatives. Um, so, so we'll calculate these derivatives uh, um, uh, soon. Uh, but, but this is the basic idea, to introduce a new time scale into the problem um, and then uh, do an expansion, thinking of y as a function of both the variables, in this case the two variables, t and tau. Um, and then we'll try and uh, solve the differential equations in a way that gets rid of the secular terms. Uh, and we'll talk more about that. Now, uh, having introduced this time scale, uh, we now see that even to lowest order, uh, we have two time scales, t, uh, t and tau. And therefore, uh, this method is called multi-scale expansion method because it typically involves introducing more than one time scale in the problem. So to, even to lowest order, we have two time scales. Two time scales, which are t and tau, into the problem, uh, and hence the name multi-scale expansion method. Um, now, why this particular dependency? Why we are taking tau to be epsilon times t? Uh, this is because, uh, uh, as we just talked about, uh, when, when we were looking at uh, the regular perturbation expansion uh, for t of the order of one over epsilon, the secular terms becomes dominant. So now we're looking for uh, the particular time scale, uh, a, a kind of time scale tau, which actually becomes of order one when t becomes of order one over epsilon. Uh, in other words, if t is one over epsilon, then tau is one, right? So we're looking for changes in y uh, over long time scales um, of the of the order of one over epsilon. Um, and so, so tau is in this in this case is sometimes also called a stretched coordinate or a long time scale of the problem. Um, and we've talked about some similar ideas like a long time scale or a long spatial scale when we when we talked about uh, when we introduced that when we were uh, initially talking about uh, perturbation methods um, and I'll try to put a link to some of those videos as well. Um, 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 so so in this case uh, tau is called a stretched coordinate. In this case, a long time scale. Okay, um, so 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 these are the basic ideas. And now let's do the algebra. Uh, in the next part of the video, let's do the algebra and work out how how to solve the differential equation uh, given that we are thinking of y as a function of two two time variables. Um, so uh, so see you in the next part of the video. Uh, thanks.